the Wood Knight is sponsored by, I would like. So I recently bought a new dust collector, which you can see over there. It's a two horsepower unit uh, and it is okay. It's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. It's the same as the Harbour Freight two horsepower unit. Uh, and the tool store in Australia that sells blue tools also has a version exactly the same. Uh, it just wasn't on special from them. I'm sure others have it as well, but this isn't about that dust collector. Now eventually in that corner over there, I want to build a room to put the dust collector in there. I'll also get a, a canister upgrade for the top filter and I'll build a fine baffle. But as I said, it's not what we're going to do today. So I want to pipe everything in first before I do the upgrades, before I build the room, I want to have a good idea about how all my machines are being hooked up. So the dust collector room will go here. So I need a pipe going into that. Um, the combo machine normally lives here, but I've moved it for putting plumbing in. Uh, and then I'll have a run across to the bandsaw and table saw. We thought about going upwards uh, on the ceiling, but where we'd need to drop it down is really in the way for how we use the table saw and bandsaw. We could flip those around and sort of cut outwards out the front door on the table saw and that would be okay, but it does get quite glary around here, particularly in summer and that affects my uh, headaches quite badly. So when we have the door open, I don't particularly like to look out, I like to look into the workshop. Uh, it also makes it a little bit easier for longer pieces to come down the driveway, so to speak. Uh, so <coughs> this piece and a Y will go about there. Y fittings and all the other fittings I just got from Bunnings, but you could get it from Masters or any plumbing supply place. So then we'll be going down onto the floor and I've got two 45 elbows, which make it a gentler curve. Um, so I'll need to cut a filler piece in there so that it'll actually connect. It's the 100 mil PVC pipe. And then I'll do the same thing transitioning to the floor so that you can run along the floor single hard pipe rather than um, flex pipe to the bandsaw and table saw and router table and split off. I'll get a three-way connector eventually. I've only got a two-way for now and I'll put in blast gates along the way. For whatever reason, I don't particularly want to cut this on the miter saw um, for how I'm feeling. It's just easier to do it with the hacksaw. It's not that big a deal. So to start off with, I need a few connectors or spacer pieces to go between my connections. So I want to cut off about 100 mil. Doesn't need to be overly precise for the length. I don't think. We'll find out. The next thing is how do you get that line all the way around to make a nice straight cut. Get a piece of paper and wrap it over itself. And in theory, when you wrap it over itself, that should make it a 90 degree line. A uh, straight line, whatever. Now this is not going to be 100% straight. It's going to be straight enough. For my purposes, anyway. So I've got a bit of a V-block. Um, I had a bit of a V-block. So I've got a V-block, which is just cut on the table saw. Um, sitting on top of there. It helps reduce how quickly it wants to get away from me. That's about it. Right, so make a few strokes backwards. So what I like to do is sort of just score the outside on that line. Then I can make deeper cuts and it seems to be fairly straight then. So after that's cut, there's, compared to the other side, quite a lot of um, a burr. So I ease that with a file uh, to put a bit of a chamfer on it. And then to clean the rest, um, I've just been using a piece of 120 grit sandpaper. Of course it would probably be fine to... For now, I'm not going to glue these in because I'm not 100% certain where everything's going to go. Um, so worst case, I can put some tape around it and it should be airtight. But for now, this is still going to be better than tripping over our flex hose.
So this is the uh, end of the pipe that would normally receive another piece of pipe if you're doing it for storm water or whatever. So I've got a small piece of PVC, just uh, it's about 100 mil wide. That fits into this end. Then I've got another piece with a slot missing out of it. I think this was from Shop Built's channel. He suggested doing this for fitting PVC pipe to flex hose. That then will squeeze inside of that PVC pipe <coughs> and, the and the flex hose will then go onto that split one. I don't know if this is the ideal solution, there's probably a better way, but for now this will do. So to go to the table saw from the Y, I've got a, well, the Y fitting a coupler, which goes on top of the blast gate. And then that's clamped to some hose. <coughs> I only have the one coupler though, so I don't actually have enough for the band saw. So instead, I'm gonna have to go with the ugly solution of uh, ho small bit of hose, um, to a blast gate and then another piece of hose to the actual machine itself. So I've marked where I need to make the second cut for the second run to hook up the bandsaw and unfortunately all I've got is this flex hose that came in the kit with various uh, accessories with my dust collector. Um, and calling it flex hose is a little unfair. It's not particularly flexible. It has about the minimum radius it'll keep before it really springs back. <coughs> I've had other flex hose which is much better and is wire reinforced. This is just reinforced with plastic. Um, it's a lot stiffer, which I guess is kind of good maybe. I, I don't know, um, just a lot harder to work with. So I wouldn't recommend getting that kit unless you have a place for absolutely everything because the hose just isn't as good as what it could be. <coughs> oh, it's also very heavy compared to other flex hose. <coughs> which can be problematic when you're trying to hang stuff. So for now that's all hooked up. I still need to uh, hook up the dust collection on the router. So I'll build a box around the base of the router and also on the fence I can plug in an angled machine adapter and just that for the box. Um, that'll happen at some stage in the not too distant future but I'm not sure when. So in the past I used this remote, which is just a remote with uh, four different power points, uses RF to turn them on or off. It's fairly basic, works with uh, 240 10 amp, just fine. And that was fine on the old dust collector. On the new dust collector, it's got a different type of switch. It's got uh, a NVR switch, so no volt release. Uh, this is an example of it. So when you press down, when there's current, it holds it down. But as soon as the current is cu cut, it releases. So when I turn the power point off, it shuts down the machine for good until I go over and press it again. So I can have it as a remote off, but not as a remote on, which is more valuable. So I'm not sure whether, <coughs> I'm not sure whether that's an Australian standards thing where all power tools or machines, I should say, 
have to have that because looking around all of my machines have something like these NVR switches. So what I need is a DPST dual pole single throw switch. Uh, it should just drop straight in with the four um, spade connectors. I just need to get one that's rated for 16 amps, at, I think it is, <clears throat> and then that should work. So that's the first task to do before I build the room that will go back there uh, and the router can sort of happen concurrently. Now I haven't done any tests on the airflow and things like that. At this stage, just having it hooked up and out of my way is the priority. Um, and I can look at optimization down the track. Without a doubt, there'll be someone who hasn't got to this point in the video that'll be screaming, oh, what about grounding your system and uh, explosions? A lot of people will recommend that you ground your PVC system so it doesn't cause explosions. There's a few things wrong with that. First, woodworkings like old wise tale meet classical men's gotta one up each other so the stories become more fanciful the more generations they go on um, <clears throat> i'm yet to see any evidence that in a home shop environment on a two horsepower or less dust collector that there's enough or a single machine as well there's enough build up to cause an explosion the only maybe one vague case that some guy said his his uncle's brother or whatever <clears throat> had uh, there was no conclusive evidence that it was actually from the static piping or something else. I think there was like hot embers from grinding that caused it. Secondly, a lot of people say that uh, wrapping it in wire actually will make it worse. What it will do is stop the shocks, which since I've only just hooked it up, I haven't been getting. That might be something we look at down the path uh, for personal not wanting to get zapness rather than from explosions. There will definitely be someone screaming up and down about this. If you think it is something that is serious and people need to uh, pay attention to, cool, that's great. Please provide some evidence. So yes, to recap, dust collector now out of the way. Um, the combo machine <coughs> is there and it's actually a fair bit out from the wall. Um, a little bit further than I wanted it to be because the PVC had to come out because of these pillars here. That's the garage design. So I could make 45s around that, but that's a lot of work for not any gain really. So I can probably shorten the pipe and the flex pipe on it <coughs> and I should be able to get it in a little bit further. Might even get some of the stretchy flex pipe. I don't know. Um, so that's okay. Router will get dust collector, fine baffle and remote for the dust collector are up next whenever I get around to them. Thanks for watching. <laughs>